Hidden in the chronicles of literature, a masterpiece of wisdom emerges. The Coiled Serpent, a philosophy of the conservation and transmutation of reproductive energy. 1939, by the venerable C.J. Van Villiet. This literary work stands as an epitome within the realm of semen retention, no fap and celibacy, widely regarded for its profound insights. Within its pages, we have thoughtfully curated the quintessential five chapters, each designed to explore functions of the human being and how the abuse of sex has hindered our race from becoming the pinnacle of perfection, the most immaculate specimen to grace the earth. The workings of the glands in living bodies are wondrous and beyond human understanding. These biochemical factories extract materials from the food we consume to manufacture essential substances for our development and sustenance. Glands instinctively perform their tasks in response to nature's needs, backed by an intelligence surpassing human comprehension. They produce precisely the required secretions for various bodily processes in response to messages from different body parts. Glands generally secrete only when stimulated by specific factors. However, human interference has disrupted their natural functioning. Artificial excitations have compelled some glands, especially those related to nutrition and sex, to overproduce secretions. The essential reproductive glands, like the ovaries and testes, have a dual function, producing external secretions for reproduction and internal secretions vital for physical, mental, and spiritual health. Deprivation of these internal secretions can lead to deterioration in well-being. Sexual activity can interfere with their production, hindering self-regeneration, including mental and spiritual aspects. Even purely generative acts involve a sacrificial element, offsetting some loss in spiritual potentialities. However, non-generative sexual expressions only result in a loss. Modern knowledge emphasizes redirecting the life force from generative to regenerative channels for evolutionary advancement. This shift is essential for overall well-being. Contrary to some beliefs, normal development and efficient functioning of the sex glands do not rely on sexual expression. In fact, sexual activity can interfere with their proper functioning. Well-functioning sex glands are evident in a sound body, a clear mind, and overall well-being. The human mind holds the key to liberating mankind from material bondage, but its potential remains largely untapped, with only a fraction of its capacity typically used. The mind's instrument, the brain and the body, must be prepared and purified to harness even this limited portion effectively. When focused solely on material concerns, it manifests as the lower mind and intellect. When devoted to spiritual matters, the abstract mind emerges, leading to intuition. Intuition and instinct share a common source in nature's intelligence. Humans can consciously develop intuition through mental exercise, reconnecting with nature's intelligence. Initially, the human mind became entangled in bodily impulses, driven by self-consciousness, memory and anticipation. Over time, excessive stimulation of passions persisted, leading to a state of sexual excess. Purification and aligning the mind with mind itself is the first step, often achieved through abstinence for mental clarity and strength. Those who yield to base desires strengthen their appetites with the lower mind, while the higher mind guides individuals to nature's secrets through intuition. Intellectual reasoning can approach spiritual understanding under favorable circumstances. But transcendence of animal impulses is essential to enter the sanctuary of nature's knowledge. Intellectual prowess depends on the strict regulation of sexual expression, as wasted vital energy forfeits potential intellectual capacity. Throughout history, it's recognized that carnal pleasure and intellectual capacity conflict. To attain intellectual vigor, abstaining from sexual concerns is crucial. 
While not everyone who abstains achieves high intellectual prowess, a degree of asceticism characterized by wholehearted renunciation is conducive to reaching high levels of intellectualism. Humanity must reduce its proclivity for sexuality to progress intellectually. To attain intuition, one must rise above sensory temptations and the constraints of the concrete mind. Such refinement can only be achieved by those who practice continence willingly. Nature sees the sexual impulse's purpose as clear. Procreation. Any deviation from this, whether solitary or shared, heterosexual with intentional sterility, homosexual, prostitution, birth control, labeled as inversion or perversion, congenital or acquired tendencies, all are considered perversions. From a sociological standpoint, varying degrees of reprehensibility may be distinguished, but the spiritual perspective finds them uniformly objectionable and corrupt. These aberrations are seen as pathological acquisitions, contrary to nature, stemming from unbridled lust, ethically reprehensible and destructive to human dignity. They drain vitality, strain the nervous system, erode self-control, and pose a potential danger to society. Their most alarming repercussions manifest in offspring, where acquired sexual perversion can become an indelible vice in the next generation. Every sexual perversion runs counter to humanity's true purpose, to preserve the species without debasing the individual, such acts debase the person and hinder soul development far from happiness. To attain true happiness, passions must diminish. While physical consequences of perversion are overstated, psychic effects are more detrimental, impairing idealism, nobility, and finer qualities, coarsening the moral and spiritual fabric, reducing life to sense pleasure. Modern perspectives may excuse perversion based on inborn tendencies, but this approach, if applied universally, would excuse all crime. Recognizing these factors helps us understand disordered conditions and guides efforts to prevent predisposed individuals through eugenics. Nonetheless, perversion and crime remain intolerable abnormalities countering spiritual evolution and necessitating elimination for progress in any society. Human nature can be likened to an army in the field, with the physical senses as outposts reporting to the Central Intelligence Department. The success of this army depends on how it handles the information from these outposts, just as an army that allows intoxicating and salacious supplies into its headquarters is doomed, human progress becomes impossible when the senses introduce questionable sensations into both the body and mind. In evolution, sense awareness first emerged in plants, initiating emotion. In animals, emotions, driven by physical senses under instinct's control, laid the foundation for the growth of the mind. For human evolution to continue, the mind must control the senses, training them for higher vibrations and preventing them from disrupting intelligence or introducing passion-stirring elements. However, for most people, the senses dominate the mind rather than being controlled by it. This leads individuals to pursue pleasure, making lust a second nature. Instead of serving spiritual evolution as observation outposts, the senses serve self-gratification, coarsening individuals and opposing spiritual oneness. The senses' inclinations often conflict with the spirit, blunting the perception of sublime things, particularly in the realm of sex. The misuse of the senses and emotional response to sensory impressions are to blame. Each sense should be developed within its domain for conscious observation, but when used to stimulate other sensations or indulge in sensual gratification, faculties become distorted. Discriminating between natural and unnatural sense use is challenging, as human passions and misapplied senses hinder spiritual insights. While physical senses observe the external world, 
there are wider vibrations beyond their reach. Individuals can develop non-sensory powers of perception without leaving their bodies, accessible by those who transcend sensory impulses and passions. Wisdom is often attained by rejecting sensory pleasures, as restraining the senses leads to increased intelligence. Immunity to sensory allure paves the way for spiritual powers. As spiritual power grows, it becomes detached from sensory objects, leading to boundless joy that surpasses sensory pleasures. True happiness is found by subordinating the sense nature to the aims of the spirit, ascending to the infinite realm of the spirit, and touching the boundless joy beyond sensory limitations. The concept of superhumanity, transcending typical human existence, has been explored in various philosophical and spiritual traditions. It suggests that humanity is a stage in evolution, with superhumanity representing the next level. Superhumanity entails expanded consciousness and spiritual development beyond the human realm, akin to the idea of spiritual evolution. This concept implies untapped human potential that can be awakened to reach an advanced state. Superhumanity is not easily comprehended by those without the corresponding consciousness. Some individuals in history are thought to have achieved this state, possessing exceptional knowledge and wisdom, serving as examples of spiritual development. To attain superhumanity, one must overcome carnality and spiritual atrophy, embracing chastity and asceticism to elevate their higher nature. This path taps into hidden potential and leads towards a superhuman state. In essence, superhumanity represents a higher level of consciousness and spiritual growth attainable through self-transcendence and evolution.